All right, let's turn to impeachment. And there's a lot of big picture stuff there. But specifically, I want to start with you because you've been under fire, as you know, in recent days with the chairman, who you don't get along with very much. Adam Schiff sort of dropped this in the report uh, that there are phone records from Rudy Giuliani suggesting that you were speaking to not just Rudy Giuliani, but Lev Parnas, one of his associates who's now been indicted. Uh, have you checked your phone records to see whether or not what the chairman is alleging is true? Yeah, so. I've been under fire for three years because we continue to expose corruption, right? Whether it's the Democrats unmasking Trump transition officials to them funding the dossier that was used to then given to the FBI to then get a FISA warrant on Carter Page. Uh, and then, of course, over the, the two weeks before Thanksgiving, I think they were embarrassed by uh, their lack of evidence they were able mm -hmm. to present through the hearings. So what happened is the Friday before Thanksgiving, this fake news story drops about, about me supposedly being in Vienna. And then we get back from Thanksgiving, and then lo and behold, my name, along with a couple, my, one of my current staff people, mm -hmm. I think this is important, and a former staff person, all of a sudden our civil liberties are violated because our phone records show up in, in this uh, report. Uh, but I can tell you, I, I, had to, I was busy all week, so finally yesterday I had a chance to go through all my phone records. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, my phone records do not match what... Schiff and the Democrats put in that report. So you did not talk to Lev Parnas, for example, as many times as they're alleging? Well, what I have, let me tell you what I have. I can tell you that the, it doesn't match, okay? So I have one call with Rudy Giuliani in April, one in May, okay? Substitute call. The rest of the calls are either where somebody didn't connect or it was a voicemail, right? So one in April, one in May. I have a call from somebody named, it's, I assume is Parnas' wife because it's registered to a lady. Mm -hmm. Incoming call to my phone. Uh, I would do what I would normally do in a situation where you don't recognize somebody, you don't know somebody. You say, thank you very much. Let me get you to the appropriate staff person. So did you ever have a substantive conversation with Lev Parnas about information in Ukraine? Yes, sir. Well, no? anything. So remember, I don't, I don't, didn't recognize the name until just you know, in the last month when he was indicted because mm -hmm. I didn't know who the person was. So we get so many calls all the time from random people because we're the oversight committee, right? So we get calls from Americans, calls from foreigners. What I can tell you is I, I don't remember it being a female voice. Seems like you know, I remember a call of somebody I didn't know. I said, hey, I'll get you to the appropriate staff person. But I can tell you what we didn't talk about, <laughs> okay? I can tell you that there's no way that I talked about me being in Vienna, meeting with random Ukrainians. That didn't happen, right? So I can tell you we didn't talk about that because that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, the, and the other issue about Parnas that we know of is that the only person that's been talking to Parnas are the Adam Schiff and the Democrats. So I received one call, which we received, like I said, we receive calls all the time from somebody at least related to Parnas. They're in touch with Parnas all the time. So if there's a problem with Parnas, they need to investigate themselves. On, on this issue of Schiff and, and Rudy Giuliani, a lot of people pointing to basic civil liberties, not just of members of Congress, but reporters and others, anyone right. that would have been talking to Rudy Giuliani. Now their phone records are out there? Is this something that so we Congress have, can do? So, so I believe I am the first member of Congress, and I believe my staff and former staff are the first ones ever to have their phone records exposed like this. Hmm. So we're sitting on roughly 3,500 pages of metadata, of phone records that the Democrats subpoenaed. And what they started doing is they started taking all that and started dropping phone numbers in and searching, let me see what numbers pop up. And so the truth is, two calls with Rudy Giuliani and one call with a guy that I don't even know is, seems Hmm. Pretty you? odd to say that that's a conspiracy, right? And then he pops me in the report saying that I had something to do with this Ambassador Yovanovitch being yeah. fired. Well, I have news for them. I didn't even know who she was We're running until, low time, until a month or two ago. More. Are you yes. going to release your phone records to show the mismatch? Well, I'm not going to. Well, I think that is a question uh, between AT&T, House Democrats, Verizon, right. and the courts. So, you know, we're going to have to take legal action here. Are you taking it, legal action right we're now? We're definitely going to take legal action. Right. Because Jeez. remember, they have the phone records of many journalists. They have the phone records of many members of Congress. Mm. Right? Rudy Giuliani, I'm not the only member of Congress that Rudy Giuliani knows. So there's a lot at stake here because those phone records are down there. And at any given time, if they don't like a reporter or they don't like some, a, a member of Congress, they can gin up a story like they did with me and put those phone records out there. So we need to get to court 
to try to stop that from happening again.